This is KGW News at Sunrise. Now at 6 o'clock, the Eagle Creek exit in the gorge could be closed for the entire weekend after a landslide covers the ramp there with debris. And you know, these fountains are iconic to Portland, but how and why would someone steal one of them? This morning, the hunt is on for the Benson Bubbler Bandit. A wave of bomb threats ignites fear across the country and also right here in Oregon. Now federal investigators say this all appears to be just a widespread hoax. And just incredible video out of New York. Look at that, a five alarm fire triggers that massive backdraft. A dozen people got hurt. Amazingly, they all survived. And how about using some extra horsepower? We're talking real <laughs> horses here. Yeah, they helped a semi truck get up an icy road. Belgian draft horses coming to the rescue <laughs> to get that big rig unstuck. Looks like a Budweiser commercial. I, I knew you were exactly gonna say what that. I was going to say. We're for the Clydesdale. It's all right. <laughs> Let's check out the drive right now on the sunset. Highway 26, that's the inbound commute. Working your way over the Sylvan Hill in pretty good shape. Rolling up and down the west side on 217. And a quick check of the drive down there on the bottom part of your screen. A second ago. Uh, <laughs> I-205, looking wide open. Guys, I've got no freeway trouble out there just yet. No horses good man. either. Good to You're hear. Good man, yeah, Chris. happy Friday. Thanks for joining <laughs> us. I knew you were going to jump in with that. Maybe they can get a Budweiser deal after uh, that. Snow, Sponsorship. big horse, <laughs> beer. Uh, good news. So I got up early this morning. I mean, I was looking at weather stuff at 2.30 at home, and it uh, doesn't look to be a realistic threat of anything other than 15, 20, 35 mile per hour winds. we were thinking today. it might be pretty windy. Well, there was but, that one yeah. mile that was showing stronger winds. But anyway, but so that's kind of a typical blessing day for us. We do have the wind warning at the coast, but even that is for the coast and the headlands only where the winds could be gusting to 60. And of course, for you folks, that's kind of garden variety stuff. Beautiful shot from Pioneer Courthouse Square this morning with the uh, Christmas tree all lit up in its glory in front of the courthouse at the bus stop. 40 degrees on average. Some of you are down to around freezing, so it's a chilly start in spots. Rain holds off until after nine, so we think it's dry during the heart of the commute. 50 and blustery at lunchtime, heavy showers, and still on the windy side later today. Latest Futurecast model 1030 still has Portland Dry, so the system is taking its time moving in. All right, Rod, thank you very much. It is 6.03, and we have breaking news from overnight. A motorcyclist was involved in a bad accident in Gresham and is seriously injured this morning. Video from the scene shows just how bad the accident was. The front tire of that motorcycle was completely torn off. This happened at Northeast 188th and Halsey Street. Gresham police say they don't know yet what caused the crash. We go now to Oregon City where police are searching for the driver in a hit and run that badly hurt a woman. The crash happened around 10 last night near Malala Avenue and Gaffney Lane. Witnesses say the driver hit the woman and then took off. Police gave out some photos of pieces of the car that they think was involved in the crime. They say it looks to be a dark colored van or SUV. We'll try to get those photos in our next uh, version of the story when we run it. If you know anything, call police. Four minutes after six o'clock now. We have an alert for anyone who may be driving through the gorge this weekend. Crews are keeping the exit 41 ramp on I-84 closed because of a landslide. Debris covered the road there on Wednesday, and when crews tried to clear the road from that debris, more started to come down from the hill. The hill started to slide again. So this exit could be closed the entire weekend. Most of the vegetation near this exit was burned in last year's Eagle Creek fire, which makes it really prone to landslides. It is 604. We've told you about the new plan for Vancouver's waterfront. Well, a developer wants to transform the area on the east side of the interstate bridge and possibly tear down some businesses there. Those restaurants are saying not so fast. Kirkland Development recently bought the property that holds Joe's Crab Shack and Hoosong and Larry's. We talked to both restaurants. Hoosong and Larry's says it does not plan on going anywhere. Joe's Crab Shack says its lease isn't even up until 2030. Kirkland says the plan is to turn the property into retail and residential space with offices, hotels and restaurants. If you look at the buildings, uh, there's a lot of wear on them and, um, you know, change can be good too. I think it's one of the last great pieces on the waterfront. It happens to be on the east side and I think what's with what's going on on the west side, this will make a huge difference. Well, the developer says whatever happens, both of the restaurants will stay open for now. Five minutes after six, we have a crime story for you this morning that can best be described as bizarre. One of the city's famous Benson bubblers has been stolen. So these bubblers are like 60 pounds each. 
Uh, they're the bronze fountains you see all around the city. Well, this one was taken from the corner of Southeast 65th and Foster. City officials believe it happened last week sometime between Thursday evening and, and Friday morning. The Water Bureau security team is now looking for a surveillance video from nearby businesses to help out. I mean, we were pretty surprised. We, um, since I've been at the bureau, I haven't heard of a Benson Butler be stolen. I don't know if this has ever happened before. Um, it's a really unusual case, and it's it's particularly sad because this bubbler was hit by a car earlier this year. It took a few months to replace it, and uh, and now it appears to be stolen. Yeah, that's what Ashley and I were saying earlier. It's, How? Yeah, it's bizarre. How? What? All right, the Benson bubblers have been around for decades. There's actually more than 120 of them sprinkled around the city. If you have any information about this case, you're asked to contact authorities. Well, this story is making headlines around the country right now. A seven year old girl from Guatemala died of dehydration and exhaustion after she was taken into Border Patrol custody last week. That's according to The Washington Post. U.S. Customs and Border Protection says she was caught crossing from Mexico into the U.S. illegally with her dad and a large group of migrants. The Post says the girl started having seizures about eight hours after getting taken into custody. She was hospitalized with a 100 five degree temperature and later died. Homeland Security told the Post Border Patrol agents took every possible step to save the child's life under the most trying of circumstances. You know, a lot of lawmakers are reacting to this story, including Oregon Senator Jeff Merkley, who was in Texas this morning. In a new interview with CNN overnight, he said children belong in schools and homes and should not be locked up. We also have now the a, a new strategy of traumatizing children, which is, well, we're going to lock them up. We're going to lock them up with their families in internment camps. Merkley says he is going to be visiting two of those camps today. 607 is the time. President Trump is on the defense this morning about his former lawyer going to jail and also about a brand new investigation involving his campaign. NBC's Tracy Potts has the latest this morning from Washington, D.C. I, Donald John Trump, do solemnly swear. Now under investigation by U.S. attorneys in New York, whether the Trump inaugural committee misused some of the $107 million it raised, whether money was given to gain access to the new administration, according to the Wall Street Journal. That doesn't have anything to do uh, with the president or the first lady. It's the latest concern for President Trump. Multiple sources say he's worried about impeachment after his former lawyer, Michael Cohen, got three years in prison, in part for claiming Mr. Trump directed illegal hush money payments to alleged mistresses. Mr. Trump on Fox. I never directed him to do anything wrong. Whatever he did, he did on his own. He's a lawyer. A source confirms President Trump was in the room when Cohen discussed the National Enquirer paying off Karen McDougal. He shouldn't be concerned only about impeachment. He could be facing criminal charges from Bob Mueller. President Trump will soon be dealing with Mueller's Russia investigation without a chief of staff. Four people have reportedly turned down the job. Now, on those hush money payments, the key legal issue here is whether they were done to avoid embarrassment or to influence the election. Tracy Potts, NBC News, Washington. All right, 609 is the time. We want you to check this out before we get to Rod Hill's latest weather forecast. A large semi truck got stuck in Minnesota last week trying to go up an icy driveway. So forget about calling AAA. <laughs> the homeowners nearby offered their Belgian draft horses to help the stand, uh, stranded driver. After a few heaves, the horses were able to get the truck moving forward. Uh, then a tractor came in and was able to push the semi from the back to finish the job. But horsepower nice. wow, got that thing going, ladies and gentlemen. That's pretty impressive. <laughs>